So Ink, let's just really get right into um, just kind of the ideology behind the different types of art that you use. I, you know, when I look at your art, I see culture, I see pop culture, I see traditional um, culture, I see religion, I see hip hop, I see politics, I see literally everything um, just bursting out in your art. Yeah. There has to be some sort of mechanism around why you do that. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about that. The thing is, I never produce for people. I produce for myself. If people like my artwork, that's wonderful. If they don't, that's wonderful as well. I only produce artwork that's hit me. So for example, the Donald Trump piece, or something based on religion, like Guru Nanak or Lord Shiva. Something that's hit me, or a story I've felt where I'm like, whoa. But the thing is, I don't plan it. I just notice myself holding a pen and I'm drawing away. And I'm like, whoa, I, I don't even remember that. But I don't question that too much. I feel like that's my calling. So what any, anything that hits me emotionally, you'll see me going crazy on it, 12, 13 hours producing a piece. Wow. Um, and again, I don't question that because I feel like that's my calling. And it's, it's, for me, it's meant to be there and I should be producing that. So it could be music. It could be, like you said, a political piece. Um, there's so many you know, tragic events that happened in the past on bombings and stuff. So I felt the need to do it. So. Um, you know, it's one of those things, very emotionally responsive, what I feel has affected me and affected the world and humanity. I'm all a strong believer about supporting them. And it's really interesting how you do it because, you know, sometimes it, they'll be like the one piece. And, I, 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 you know, I've, I've loved your art for so long. Um, and mm. what I love about it is this kind of that, this rawness in emotion mm -hmm. that's associated with it. You kind of think that you're seeing something and then when you look deeper, there's so much more going oh, on. I'm so glad you said that. Right? Yeah. Yes. I love making a story within a story because, you know, I, again, it's coming down to my name, Inquisitive. I, you know, if I'm going to have a name as strong as Inquisitive, I'm going to have to pose questions. And throughout the last five years producing pieces, my first piece was very, you know, straight to the point. But then I started doing pieces which involve people turning the artwork around, seeing a little closer into what it is. And I love that because when I produce a piece of art, I want people to become the artists of that piece. And I want them to explain it to me because I never explain my pieces. Because again, this is coming back to imagination is free. I want people to say, well, what do you see? Like, you tell me what you see, you know, there's no right or wrong. Sometimes, you know, at exhibitions, people have said, I've seen my granddad in there, you know, I see this, I see that, or I've seen my sister. And I love that. Wow. Because it's bringing us together, that energy's brought us together. So Absolutely. I think that's a wonderful experience. I love, love producing art for those reasons. So, you know, I've watched, um, as I mentioned to you um, uh, earlier on, I, I've watched the way that you produce art in your um, YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. it, I, it almost feels like, you know, something else kind of comes mm. within you. Like, I don't know, you know, you know what I'm talking about, I do, right? I do. And, it, it, and it's like you're on a mission. Yeah. And it's almost like you can't stop until mm, you, you've 100%. completed it. But I almost get this sense that, your completion point is something you never know until you get there. When it comes to painting, you know how we take dogs for a walk? I just take my hand for a walk. Literally just let it go and if, it, if, if you know, whatever happens on that piece of paper happens, I don't question it, I don't erase it. And I feel like even now, I look back at some of my pieces, I'm like, oh, I wish I could have added that, I wish I could have done this. But I feel like I will stop a piece if my mom calls me or if my phone rings. Mm -hmm. And then I feel like, okay, that was my, my means to leave the piece. That was a sign to right. go. So I look into that in, in depth and I don't question it too much, but I feel like I could go on forever with a piece, right? But mm -hmm. um, there's a balance, there's a balance. Some pieces obviously that require a bit more attention due to its fragile nature. Um, I'll make sure I, I kind of try perfect imperfectly, but with others, I kind of go with the flow. Absolutely. Well, one thing that I'm really interested in, in knowing about is at what point did you feel that, you know what, I feel that I've got enough work that represents my journey in life or represents things that I may have may have touched me or I've seen happen in the world. Um, I want to tour this. Mm. Uh, when did that come about? Because that's when yeah. you're seriously an artist, that's right? That's correct. Yeah, no, you're right. Actually, being in Toronto, I love Toronto for the reason I had my first exhibition here with one of my good friends, Rick Matharu and Hajjot Guman. So they really believed in my artwork, just like, you know, how many other wonderful people I'm meeting along the journey. And, and they're the first ones that were like, you know, we think you should exhibit your work under the glass museum. And so I was like, I'll, I'll give it a go. Um, I'm not too sure, because I wanted to do the whole Banksy thing and hide away. Right. Because I was like, people are gonna laugh. He wears a turban and he does art for a living. It's <laughs> a joke. Um, but I did that one and it was a huge success. And from there on, I just loved that rush of walking into a room with people seeing 
pages of your diary on the wall. Because yeah. it's not just art for me, it really is parts of my body. You know, mm. people can tear it, people can rip it apart, they can do what they want. Um, and I love that rush, but most importantly, I love the critique. I love hearing back from people and saying, well, you know, I love this piece for so-and-so reason. Mm. Um, you know, this one's connected with me. I don't understand this one. Explain it. I love that. And mm. I think that's helping me as a human being. So for those reasons, I love touring. And I would say from just after my first tour, which was in 2012 to yeah. 2013, yeah. I love the rush. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, it's really interesting because I'm listening to you talk and you, you and we started off the interview by saying that you know you could like easily be you know like a bhangra um, <laughs> you know singer or musician or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Your journey's you know not really that dissimilar mm -hmm. to somebody that may be a musician or a musical artist or an actor or yeah. you know anyone that's in any of these kind of multidisciplinary art forms, mm -hmm. right? Like mm -hmm. the the experience is quite similar. So what would you say? Um, across the five years that you've been really doing this seriously, um, how, you know, were there any points during that time period where you felt, you know what, I don't think I've got anything left to say? Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. And I feel like at those very moments I travel. Mm. It helps me energize and gain that understanding from other people. Got it. And gets me right on the same path again. I feel like it's very easy to get thrown into big follow, like getting a following and then getting thrown into the deep end and people saying this and that. And it's so easy to get sidetracked. Mm -hmm. And I have felt the way sometimes where I'm like, okay, what, what, what's next? Like, how do I stay relevant right now? Um, and that's when I realized that, yo, what I'm going to do is I'm going to travel. I'm going right. to understand, get an understanding of what the people that appreciate my art, what is it they want? What is it that they look forward to? What is it that they're communicating with? Mm -hmm. And I think that is the biggest energy for me at that very moment. How would you describe who you are as an artist? Because everybody comes to you and they have an opinion about your art. And mm. you've been talking to me about this throughout the interview. What do you think about yourself as an artist? Um, well, I know the best is yet to come. Mm. <laughs> Always is because I don't want to get comfortable thinking I've made it because yeah. there's such a long way to go. Um, but in terms of my art, I, I, I love knowing that I'm very spontaneous about it. I don't think too much. I was the, I'm the kind of guy who, like I said, being bullied, coming from a thinking too much about what people think. And I know I still have these doses of where I do it, but I, I like and appreciate in my art, I'm so honest about it now. Mm. I'm very confident about if you like it, you like it. Whereas before, I used to be a people pleaser. Mm -hmm. How am I going to produce this piece and he or she's going to like it? Whereas now is, this is who I am, man. If you appreciate it, by all means, that's great. And I love knowing that that's who, I mean, I don't know how to describe it in a word, but that is me in a bulk right now. Right. And I'm, I couldn't be more happy about that. You are, you know, a spiritual person mm -hmm. having a, um, you know, a journey through a human experience. Yeah, 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 right? that's right, that's like right. There's, this say, there's a saying. That's about correct, that, yeah, right? I know what you're on about. Yeah, yeah. so I, I feel that you're definitely indicative of that kind of um, life journey. Mm. Where do you want to go next? That's a great question. Um, I know a few things I want to do. I know I want to keep touring, which I'm doing at the end part of this year. Um, but you know what? Honestly, the last five years I never planned. I never planned to be here. I never planned to have done 13 exhibitions. And I feel like if I put a, 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 like a little note down of what I want to do, I'll wreck it. Mm -hmm. So wherever the ink takes me, mm -hmm. I'll be there. But I mean, I do want to do children's books. I did my master's in children's illustration. So I do have some books I want to publish. I have a clothing line that's coming out. So these two things are like a tick I want to do. But in terms of my travels or what, what's next in art sense, you know, I, I don't know. And I like knowing that. Yeah. Like I said, I'm a very free person. You know, I could probably go home, be inspired by this conversation and draw <laughs> something. So uh, oh, I love that. And if you do, you need to tag me. I want oh, to most certainly. <laughs> what would you say to um, other people from, you know, any culture um, that are kind of scared to take that step mm. into um, the known unknown. Mm -hmm. I call it the known unknown. I like that. Right? I like because, that. Because, um, you know, there's always this kind of journey that life takes us on. Mm -hmm. There's the journey that you know where you're headed yep. and things are safe. You know how your bills are going to get paid. You know how things are going to happen for um, your life. And then there's this other journey which is kind of like flying off, mm. you know, that, that cliff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, where will you land? Yeah. Right? So you're that person, I'm yeah. that person. Yeah, so yeah. I, get, I get you. Yeah. I get you. I'm glad. Right? I'm glad. Um, what would you say to, you know, people who are kind of, especially the kids, right, mm -hmm. um, that are sitting at the fork of those two mm. to help them make their decision, but without making their decision for them? Yeah, no, most certainly. Um, that's a wonderful question, by the way. With my own experience, I can only share with my experiences, 
I was put into that safe zone where it was like, you know, do something that, you know, get you by. Not yeah. from my parents, but that's my mentality I had. And so I did, you know, I used to, I used to work for a windows company and call up, would you like to buy some windows? <laughs> and what I didn't realise was that actually while I was doing that, I kept my hobby, which was art. Mm -hmm. And in a year's time, I realised my, my profession, which was a tele sales and my hobby started changing. Mm -hmm. So what I'm, suggest, what I'm saying is for any youngsters listening right now, if they have a passion and they don't, not too sure to go about it, I think there's two mistakes people make. Is the, the, the first one, well, there's two ways people go about it. One is to say, well, I don't want to take that route anymore because I don't think it's safe. Or there's those who say, well, I'll, sh I'll d take the safe way, but I'm going to keep poking the other side. And you, what you realise is that actually your, prof your, your passion becomes your profession mm -hmm. and your profession just starts dying down. That's what happened with me. I'm sitting there because I didn't give up in what I was doing. I was very mm -hmm. consistent about it. And I think consistency is the key to, to many things, especially when it, when it comes down to passion. What would be your last piece of um, you know, words or wisdom that you'd like to share with people for them to truly understand the place that you come from as a person, as an artist? You know what, me as a person, I don't think a lot. I don't, I don't think a lot. I, I honestly am very spontaneous. I've said that many times today because I feel like that is the best way to describe me. But I, I want to be, I want to, I want to be misunderstood mm -hmm. because that's the only way people are going to notice me. So you'll see me produce something which is, you think is a simple thing, which could be a content of a character, but it's actually not. So with me and my name especially, I think it's so key to look a little deeper. My real name is Amandeep. So, yes. so a man deep in thought is, <laughs> is what I go by as well. Oh, I love that. Right. So, um, you know, I clearly am not just going to put out something for the sake of it. You've got to just look a bit deeper. So for anyone that is trying to figure out who I am, keep figuring me out. Mm. That's all I'm going to say. Because as soon as they figure you out, you're already someone else. There we go. Right. There we go. There we go. And I think that's the best way to explain me. I'm a riddle and I love knowing that. I'm, I'll, I'll always be the one that's posing the questions and answering them. So how do women feel about that? Oh, I'm not too sure. <laughs> I'm not too sure. I've t I take too much time flirting with my paintbrushes at the moment. <laughs> I love that. I'm probably safer that way too. Yeah, at the moment. Thank <laughs> you, sweetheart. I really appreciate you. your time. Thank you for telling me, you know, really why you do what you do. I find, um, you know, people like you who kind of really don't know where you're going but you're going mm. and you're getting where you need to get mm. the most inspiring people to um, chat with so you got to come back I will do. when you know when you've got something else to talk about that will allow me to just kind of dive into that uh, that whole other chapter of mm. your life yeah okay? well listen at the end of the day like I say it's very hard to find an illustrator someone I'm not an actor I'm not a musician so the fact that you know you have interest in wanting to know my views is more important to me and more of honour. So I appreciate you having me on the show. Oh, your sweetheart. Thank you so Adore much. Adore you, darling. Can't wait till the next time. Most certainly. Hey, everyone. Thanks so much for stopping by. I'm so happy that you're here and I look forward to you guys subscribing to my channel so we can have loads more fun here at Open Chess with me, Raj Gurn. Yeah.